All right, in this video, we are going to look at three-dimensional vectors. Um, we're going to graph some 3D points, some 3D vectors. Uh, we'll also look at the unit vectors in three dimensions. We'll look at uh, the distance formula, the angle between vectors, and the dot product all in three dimensions. Basically, this video is just a recap of everything we just did in two dimensions, uh, but with an added uh, direction Z. Um, if you want to check out what we, uh, this material in the textbook, uh, it is at page 849 to 860 in the Larson textbook. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started with some 3D. So, in the past, if I asked you to graph the coordinate 2, 3, right, you know what this means. It means you go in the direction of the x-axis 2 and then the direction of the uh, y-axis 3. So, we had a coordinate system with two axes, and you went in the direction of the uh, x-axis 2, uh, the distance away from the y-axis, 1, 2, uh, a one arbitrary unit length, and then you went up that same unit length, 3, and that declared a point in space, but that space was on a plane. Uh, we want to add a third dimension. So if I'm going to plot a point in three dimensions, well, first I need a point, Let's go ahead and pick one. Let's go with 1, 2, 3. If I want to plot this point in space, uh, these numbers represent something. The 1 represents the direction I'm going to go, sorry, the distance I'm going to go in the x direction. The 2 represents the y direction, and the 3 represents the z direction. But in order to graph those, we need to conventionally decide on what direction X, Y, and Z are. And I have graphed over here three dimensions, all right? X, Y, and Z. And uh, the location of these letters is uh, going to be the positive direction, all right? I could go in the opposite direction of these, as I could have uh, over here. If I graphed, uh, if I graphed negative 2, 3, I would have gone negative 2, up 3. Uh, so I could go negative 1, negative 2, 3. That's uh, the negative y. That's the negative x. That's the negative z. All right, it might be useful for me in the future to add these negative um, directions. But I want to graph the point 1, 2, 3. So I need to go in the positive x direction 1, the positive y direction 2, and the positive z direction 3. And that will uh, describe a unique point in space. So uh, let's decide on an arbitrary uh, length. Let's make this the length 1. All right, so I'm going to go in this direction 1. And what's helpful is if I actually keep track as I go. So I'm going to go ahead and go this direction 1. The next thing I want to do is I want to go in the y direction, too. So uh, this is my unit length. So that's 1. That's 2. Right? I would go in this direction, too. Like normally, and you could kind of tilt your head and rotate your head uh, 90 degrees uh, clockwise, but uh, uh, we have the xy plane here. It's, uh, it's kind of flat. Uh, it's not what we're used to. But I'm going to move up towards my positive y two units. But it's a little bit disorienting. Uh, because we are graphing on this isomorphic, uh, 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 sorry, not plane, but space. So um, I'm going to go two units. It's going to appear less uh, in terms of the distance from the left side of this uh, screen, but I have gone two units here. All right? That is the same as this. Right? This is a rectangle. I have gone this far, two units. And now I need to go up three. So um, let me go ahead and uh, add three tick marks to my z-axis. One, two, three. I need to go this high, uh, but I need to go this high from this point right here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Start here. And I'm going to go, am I the best artist? Right. Right. I need to go three units up, and that's about three. One, two, three. And I have now graphed the coordinate one, comma, two, comma, three. Normally in class, I'd have you guys practice this over and over and over again. Uh, but what uh, I, I do in class is I have everyone graph this point. But in addition to graphing this point, I also have them graph the uh, rectangular prism that's constructed by graphing this point. 
right, where the x, y, and z axes are edges of the uh, rectangular prism. So we have that. Um, this is going to go up. Just give me one second to graph this little picture. I am not, once again, the best artist. Oop, I want that to be a little bit more flat. And this usually helps people get that, that point pretty accurately, graphing this rectangular prism. A quick uh, additional exercise that you guys can do to, uh, for yourself is uh, to tell yourself, hey, what is this coordinate? What is, what is this coordinate? What are the vertices of this rectangular prism? What are all the coordinates? Right? Uh, this one, two, three, that is uh, describing this point. But like, hey, what's this point? Right? So go ahead and think about what that is. Right? This point's zero, zero, zero. But what's this point? I'm going to go ahead and do this one first. This has a, uh, you're going in the x direction 1, uh, but you're going in the y direction in the z direction 0. So that point's 1, 0, 0. Right? Here, we have the point uh, 1, comma 2, but then we don't go up at all. We, we have a 1, comma 2, comma 0. Over here, we have, uh, we are going in the x direction none. We have 0, comma, it looks like we have 2, comma 0. Cool. Over here, we have 0, 0, 0. Now, up here, we have gone in the z direction 3, but we've gone in the y and x direction 0. All right, so that, that, that's that point right there. Over here, we have the coordinate. What is that going to be? That's going to be 0 in the x direction, but then 2 in the y direction and 3 in the z direction. And we got one more here. I'm going to go ahead and get it. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Here's our eighth coordinate, our eighth vertice. That's going to be a 1. 0 in the y direction, and then 3 in the z direction. So this coordinate 1, 2, 3 is the vertice right, opposite the origin in a, in a uh, rectangular prism constructed by all the possible coordinates made up by the numbers 1, 2, and 3, and 0. I just want to quickly say before I move on that um, this direction that we're using here, x, y and z x being towards you kind of outside of the page outside of the screen y being to the right and z going up that is simply convention um, some other people use a different rule of thumb um, this is called using the right hand rule because uh, if we place our hand and we curl we take our right hand and we curl it around this system we started x we curled a y and our thumb points to Z. If you were to use a left-hand rule, positive Y would be over here, and I'm sure there's other ones. But uh, this is just convention. you got to get used to it. Um, uh, it may seem uncomfortable now, but I promise you it's going to get a little bit better as time goes on. All right, so we just graphed a coordinate, a point in space, a thing that has no um, size. But I want to now graph a vector, an arrow to quantity, a um, magnitude in a direction. Um, starting at the origin. So I'm going to do this kind of quick, but if I graph the uh, vector, let's go with um, uh, let's go with 2, negative 1, 3. If I graph this vector, um, I'm going to also include the arrow in my, my, my art. It really is art. Let's, go, let's be real. All right, so I'm going to actually add my negative directions this time, All right, because I have a negative number here that's in the negative y direction. Right. Notice as I as I proceed, uh, there are eight octants. There's the uh, I'm not going to go into the uh, description of each, but uh, there are eight octants here. Right, and the, this one that's kind of right in our face, that's the first octant. Uh, but the rest of the octants don't really get names, uh, just because there's so many. Right? I know the quadrants in the Cartesian plane get names, but we're not going to go ahead and give names here. Right. But let's go ahead and graph this vector. So um, uh, I want to graph 2 in the x direction and the positive x direction at that. All right, I want to go uh, negative 1 in the y direction. And then I want to go 3 in the z direction. Right? So my point is going to be somewhere over here. And uh, just putting it down kind of doesn't really do us justice. We want, we want to give ourselves a little bit of a 3D look so that we can tell where this point is. So I'm going to uh, go 2 in the x direction. 
I'm going to go one in the Y direction, three in the Z direction, and this is the corner of a rectangular prism. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy over that length right there to right here. I, uh, I can go ahead and copy uh, this length right here. I now have the base of my rectangular prism. Copy this length, copy this length. Now I have the back face. All right, I'm gonna copy this length. Copy that length. All right, it's just a bunch of copying is really all it is. Now I tell you, I'm not an artist. Um, well, when it comes to uh, drawing. So uh, some of you are gonna be really good at this. So this point was a terrible guess. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and erase it. Right. The uh, vector two negative one three's terminal point is going to be right here, right? That is where we're gonna put our, uh, our arrow, right? And then the, uh, the uh, vector is going to start at the origin and go in this direction. All right, so we're using now vectors to describe um, quantities in three-dimensional space rather than two-dimensional space. Let's be real. Things don't actually uh, move in two dimensions. We live in a 3D world. So if we're trying to, to use math to do physics, we're probably working in three dimensions. So we're going to be using three-dimensional vectors. All right, so there we have it. There is a the vector 2, negative 1, 3. Um, it is in this, uh, this octant to the left of this first octant. It's a new octant. Um, but yeah, there you go. I'm actually going to stay on this page to continue because I want to talk about the unit vectors. So uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, we had three, uh, sorry, two unit vectors in two dimensions. We're going to have three in three dimensions. We can decompose any vector that is given to us. This, in this case, two negative one three into the sum of unit vectors. All right. So uh, what are the unit vectors? Real quick, we have the unit vector i, which is 1, 0. That's what it was in two dimensions. But in 3, we add that extra dimension. j is going to be 0, 1, 0. And then our new uh, vector, i, j, k, is going to be 0, 0, 1. All right, so if we go over here, we can decompose this red vector into uh, the sum of unit vectors. What are the unit vectors? Sorry. Um, I is going to be the uh, vector with length 1 in the direction of the positive x-axis. J is going to be the same thing, the vector of length 1 in the direction of the y, positive y-axis. And then Z is going to be that one coming straight up. It is the unit vector in the direction of the z-axis. All right, so how can I decompose this red vector into the sum of these three purple vectors, i, j, and k? Well, I'm just going to make my way to the um, end of the red vector with these, j, uh, with these unit vectors. All right, so I have uh, two i's. I have one j. Uh, sorry, not one j, but one negative j and then one, two, three Ks. So uh, how can I uh, write out two negative one? So this actually should be a two I. How can I write this out in uh, unit vectors? That's going to be two I, not plus, but minus uh, J. I'm messing up a little bit here, sorry guys. And then uh, three K, so two I minus J plus three K gets us to the vector uh, 2, negative 1, 3. So there you go. Uh, there we have it, unit vectors. So what if I want to know the length of this vector 2, negative 1, 3? What if I want to find the magnitude of a specific vector? Well, what I need to do is I need to establish a uh, distance formula in three dimensions, and that will help me find the magnitude of vectors. So let's look at the distance formula. for 3D. Let me go ahead and give myself a three-dimensional graph. There we are. Cool. So I want to figure out um, if I have an arbitrary point in space, like right here. Let me get rid of those two little, uh, those are bothering me. I'm sure they're bothering you. If I want to know where this point in space is, I'm going to need a distance formula. So let me go ahead and give this uh, this point some 
uh, dimensions so that we can kind of uh, look at it a little bit better. Let's go ahead and say it's that far, and then it's going to be uh, that far, and then it's going to be that far. All right, I could have done this with a lot of different things. This point, it's hard to describe three-dimensional points on a two-dimensional plane, uh, but we can do it with some fancy art. All right, so I want to describe this point in space right here. This is an arbitrary point, so I'm going to go ahead and call it um, x comma y comma z. All right, I want to figure out the uh, distance this point is from the origin. All right, what is this distance? Let me go ahead and change the color up on us. What is this distance? That's our goal here. All right, and you might already start to see what we can do. I'll let you think about it for a second. Right? But this distance is super manageable. Right here, why is this distance super manageable? And then what is this angle right here? What is the angle a vertical line makes when it pierces the xy plane? It makes a right angle. Right? We have here a bunch of right triangles. Right, here's another one right here. This is a right triangle. And uh, we know the lengths of the uh, legs of these two triangles because we were given the coordinate x comma y comma z. Yes, they're not point, they're not numbers, uh, but we're assuming that we know this point. So uh, what is this length right here? This is the x coordinate that you give me. What is this length right here? This is the y coordinate that you give me. This right here, that's the z coordinate that you give me. All right, if this was 1, negative 2, 3, I would know what x, y, and z are, and I would have these lengths. What is this length right here? Well, it is the hypotenuse of this purple right triangle. All right, so what is the hypotenuse of a triangle with legs x and y? It's going to be the square root of x squared plus y squared. All right, that's just the Pythagorean theorem. That is the old 2D uh, distance formula. All right, so now the question at hand is what is this length? All right, but it is the hypotenuse of a new right triangle with legs, this purple value, the square root of x squared plus y squared and this vertical value z, so let's just go ahead and evaluate that, all right? We want to know this question mark. Let's go ahead and call it d for distance. The distance is the square root of x squared plus y squared quantity squared, or sorry, rewind, the distance squared is this quantity squared plus z squared. Right. What is uh, the square root of x squared plus y squared squared? That's uh, technically the absolute value, but I'm just going to leave it as x squared y squared. We're dealing with positive values. Right. What's the distance? Here's your distance formula in 3D. Big surprise. All we did was add a z squared. There is our distance formula in three dimensions, all right? And with that said, if you have any two points in space, we can just go ahead and move this right on over to the origin and then use this distance formula, just like we did with vectors in two dimensions. We can move vectors around, all right? So if you have a point um, one comma one comma one and uh, 7 comma 2 comma negative 3, right? What's the vector between these two things? That's just going to be 7 minus 1 comma 2 minus 1 comma negative 3 minus 1 or 6 comma 1 comma negative 4. And then we can use the distance formula to find the length of this vector. So distance in 3D, not too much different than distance in 2D. That's going to make life nice and simple later. You know what? Actually, let's do a practice problem real, qu real quick. Let's look at the uh, magnitude 
of the vector negative 7, 4, 8. So negative 7, 4, 8. How do I find the magnitude of this thing? Well, if I were to sketch it, there's my origin. I would have a negative 7 is in this direction. So negative 7, 4 in the positive direction, 8. So I'm going to have this point right here. I'm going to have negative 7, uh, positive 4, positive 8. Not drawn to scale, clearly. All right, but if I want to find this distance from the pole, let me actually go change the color so you can tell the line I'm drawing. From the pole to this point right here, I'm going to just do negative 7 squared, that's quantity squared, plus 4 squared, plus 8 squared, all square rooted. That is going to be our distance of this vector, the magnitude of this vector. What is that here? That's going to be 49 plus 16 plus 64, all square rooted. That's going to be 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, 129. The square root of 129. That's our magnitude of this vector. That's the length, the distance in units from the pole, sorry, the origin to the uh, coordinate negative 7, 4, 8. All right, so we're talking vectors. We're talking magnitudes. Now what I want to look at is I want to look at the uh, angle between vectors. So we did this back in uh, two dimensions. Let's go ahead and do this in three dimensions. Give myself a, uh, a little graph here. Uh, that's two dimensions. Let's add the third dimension. All right. If I have two vectors in 3D space, there is an angle between them. Right? There is a shortest angle between them. Right? Those two vectors lie in a plane together. It's a little bit hard to imagine. And there is an angle between them, and we want to figure out what it is. So let's go ahead and call this, uh, this vector here u. Let's call this one v. And we want to find the angle theta between them. What is the angle theta between u and v. Let's go ahead and give these vectors uh, coordinates. We'll call the uh, vector u uh, the vector x1, comma y1, comma z1. We'll call vector v over here x2, comma y2, comma z2. Cool. All right, so we need to find this angle between them. Um, I want to find the angle between two lengths. This kind of feels like a problem we've done before. Take a second to think. I want to find the angle between two sides. All right. I want to find the angle between two sides. All right. This is a law of cosines problem. Right? If I can find this side C over here in a triangle, then I can use the law of cosines to find this angle. Right? That's side, side, side. Can you find this side C right here? I'm going to go ahead and change the color. Can you find that side? Take a second. Right? This side right here is u plus this side is equal to v. That's just how you add vectors. Right? u plus this side is v. So v minus u is this side. v minus u is this side. So what is v minus u? That's going to be x2 minus x1, comma y2 minus y1 comma z2 minus z1, all right? Keep in mind, these are all known values. You give me a vector of 1, 2, 3, and 7, 2, 1, I don't know. Uh, these are all known numbers. So we're working with numbers right now, not variables. All right, let's do the law of cosines with these three sides to find this angle theta. Hopefully it is beautiful and nice and uh, is analogous to two dimensions. All right, what is the length u? What is the magnitude of u? That is going to be 
the square root of x1 squared plus y1 squared plus z1 squared. The magnitude of v is going to be the square root of x2 squared plus y2 squared plus z2 squared. And then the magnitude of this uh, uh, vector over here, v minus u, is going to be the square root of x2 minus x1, quantity squared. It's going to be a little bit longer. Uh, plus y2 minus y1, quantity squared, plus z2 minus z1, quantity squared. And once again, what does the law of cosine says? It says, I want theta. So it's going to say uh, the magnitude of V minus U squared is equal to the magnitude of U squared plus the magnitude of V squared minus 2, the magnitude of U, the magnitude of V uh, cosine theta. All right, and what's nice is these are square roots, but these squares are going to knock them out. So our formula isn't going to be too bad. It's going to be pretty long, but uh, I think things are going to be nice in the long run. So I'm going to plug them in, take it to the next page. V minus U squared is going to be X2 minus X1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared plus z2 minus z1 squared. That's going to be equal to um, x1 squared plus y1 squared plus z1 squared uh, plus x2 squared plus y2 squared plus z2 squared. This is going to be all minus 2. And, you know, I'm going to be a little bit lazy here. Uh, I'm not going to write <laughs> uh, a bunch of more x squareds and y squareds and z squareds. I'm just going to write these for now. Uh, cosine theta. Cool. And you know what? That's kind of on purpose, too, because what is this, right? What is uv cosine theta? Right? That is the dot product uh, by definition in physics. That's the dot product. So, you know what? Let's go ahead and solve for that. See what happens. All right. All right. Uh, you don't have to necessarily uh, do this, but um, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this. Um, if I expand the left-hand side, I'm going to get x2 squared minus 2x1, x2 plus x1 squared. Right, I'm going to get three of those. y2 squared minus 2y1, y2 uh plus y1 squared, plus z2 squared, minus 2z1, z2, plus z1 squared. And that's equal to this left-hand side. So we got x1 squared, plus y1 squared, plus z1 squared, plus x2 squared, plus x, sorry, not x, y2 squared, plus z2 squared, minus 2, uh, this thing. All right, I'm just going to hold that there for a second because things are about to cancel out. All right, what do we got here? We have an x2 on both sides, x2 squared. We have an x1 on both sides. We have a, a y2 on both sides. Where's that y2? Right there. We have a y1 on both sides. We have a z2 on both sides. We have a z1 on both sides. And look at that. We now have this nice, beautiful formula. We have negative 2, x1, x2, minus 2, y1, y2, minus 2, z1, z2, is equal to negative 2, u, v, cosine theta. All right, and these negative 2s are going to go away. We get, we get x1, x2, plus y1, y2, plus z1, z2, is equal to u, v, cosine, theta. And guess what? That's the dot product. u dot v. Look at that. All right? 
all of this junk canceled out in the law of cosines, and we're left with the product sum, the product of the x components summed with the product of the y summed with the product of the z. We have the dot product again. Look at that. Let's go ahead and just call this thing right here u dot v. And then now we have the formula u v cosine theta is equal to u dot v. Right? Divide by mag u mag v. And we have u dot v divided by magnitude of u, magnitude of v. There is our formula for the angle theta. Theta is equal to the arc cosine. And this is always going to give you the angle less than 180, not the angle larger than 180. U dot v divided by the magnitude of u. You see I put double bars here. That's, that's just convention v. Look at that. If I want to know the angle between two vectors, all I need to do is take the uh, product of their components and sum them, their corresponding components, and then divide by the, the product of the magnitude of the two vectors, and then take the arc cosine. Let's go ahead and do that once. All right, let's say I have the vector i minus 2j plus 3k and um, and the vector 2i minus 4j uh, plus 0k. So this one's actually sitting in the uh, xy plane. Still a three-dimensional vector, but in the xy plane. All right, I want to find the uh, angle between these. So I need to utilize the formula, and I'm going to leave it in the cosine theta version rather than the arc cosine u dot v divided by mag u, mag v. All right, I'm going to call this one u. I'm going to call this one v. And uh, let's do this thing. What is u dot v? Well, that's going to be 1 times 2. Remember, the dot product is a number, not a vector. 1 times 2 is 2, uh, plus negative 2 times negative 4 is 8, plus 3 times 0 is 0. So we're going to get there 10 on th in the numerator, the uh, 10, the number 10. And then down here at the bottom, we need to divide by the magnitudes. So what's the magnitude of this one? 1 squared plus negative 2 squared plus, what is that, 3 squared. And then the magnitude of V is 4, or let me go ahead and write that on the next one, 2 squared plus negative 4 squared plus 0 squared. So what do we get over here? We get 1 plus 4 plus 9. That's going to be, uh, what is that, uh, 14. And 4 plus 16, 20 plus 0, that's 20. All right, and we can simplify this a little bit. Let's go ahead and do that. And you know what? I'm going to be taking the arc cosine anyway, so I don't feel like simplifying it. So we got the cosine theta is equal to 10 over 14 root 20. And then um, not equals, but that takes me to theta is equal to the arc cosine of 10 over 14 root, uh, root 14 root 20, which is equal to do, 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 53.3 degrees. I'm going to do another quick one real quick just to make a point. So here's two vectors, negative 1, 3, negative 2, and then uh, the vector 2, 2, 2. All right. So if I uh, do the formula here, the uh, cosine theta is equal to the uh, u dot v over the magnitude of u and v. Uh, what's u dot v? Negative 1 neg uh, and 2 is going to be negative 2 plus uh, 3 and 2, that's 6, plus negative 2 and 2, that's negative 4. Um, I actually don't care what this is because the numerator here is 0. All right? And so divided by a number is going to give you 0. What is the arc cosine of 0? That's theta. The arc cosine of 0 is... 90 degrees, pi over 2 radians.
all right? These two vectors are perpendicular. They are perpendicular to each other. Let me graph them real quick and see if that, that feels right. So here um, is my plane. There's my uh, origin. We have negative 1. Uh, sorry, negative 1 in the x direction. Uh, negative, uh, negative x direction. 3. And then negative 2. So we're going to be uh, there, there, and then down into this like back bottom quadrant. All right, so we have this vector right here. And then we also have uh, 2, 2, 2 up here. And I can totally tell that these two are, it's reasonable to think that they are perpendicular. They, they are in uh, separate quadrants, um, quadrants that are fairly close to each other. And uh, they, they, they are definitely not a, a super acute or super obtuse. So a right angle is reasonable. All right. So what does that mean? When the dot product is zero, the vectors are perpendicular. We already knew that in two dimensions. You know what? And with that said, I'm going to close this video out. Um, I don't want to get too much longer. Uh, we got perpendicular vectors here right at the end with the dot product in getting the angle between vectors. We also experienced the dot product. Where are you? There you are. x1, x2 plus y1, y2 plus z1, z2. Basically in three dimensions. We're just adding a, uh, a z to all the formulas that we already knew. Nothing is uh, crazy different yet. Um, yet. I'm not saying everything's going to be exactly the same just with a z added. Uh, but there you go. There's some basics in three-dimensional vectors. I hope it helped a little bit. Um, I will see you guys uh, next time. See ya.